feel like I'm in a boat right now. This is really ideal. Sean's on that side of the crop infested creek. Oi! Oh, I can't see a thing. Something tells me we'll be digging sandy mud until dark and sleeping somewhere along here. We're in the middle of our wettest Cape York adventure to date, trying to push our way to the tip of Australia. Oh, fuck, I've never seen this stuff before. Monsoonal rain means the roads are flooded, which means even the access tracks are a mess, and there's bonnet deep crossings in places we've never seen before. There is a 100% chance there are saltwater crocodiles in here. Last time you saw us, we were fighting our way north on an old stock route in the Daintree, with a plan to try and make it all the way up to the tip of Cape York. But our journey has come to a grinding halt here at the Han River Roadhouse. North of us, the Peninsula Development Road, or PDR, is so waterlogged that it's virtually impassable. With every setback comes an opportunity, and our good mate Rob, who runs the Roadhouse, has given us the perfect mission while we wait for the road to open up. Hidden right out the back of his property are some secret barra fishing holes, and Rob's G'd us up to try and get out there and open up the track for the season. Not even the quad bikes have made it out there yet, so we're going to be in for quite a challenge. With a mud map drawn up, the lure's prepped and ready, and an entire station property ahead of us to explore, I've got a feeling that the next few days are going to be pretty epic. For this leg of the trip, we're joined again by our mates Az from Mitz Alloy, Pete from Ultima 9, as well as Liam in his Steady 200 series, who's managed to catch us up on the road and is going to join us on this journey up to the tip. And of course, Jesse, who's been loving taking on the Cape in the mighty D-Max. A lot of people fly straight past Han River, but trust me when I say this, this is a four-wheel drive and fishing destination. Make sure you make this your first stop for your Cape trip, mm. and trust me, you won't regret it. And every time you start off with a bit of a mud map drawn with a couple of yeah. crayons from Rob, you know you're in you for a real go. Time, so yeah. I'll keep that made up the front. I reckon we air down. The boys are just airing down at the yeah. moment, and um, we'll get stuck into it. Like I said, early in the season, there's going to be water everywhere. We know from experience that Cape York is prime black soil country, and within minutes, we get our first indication of what could be ahead. I am down and out for the count. Well, I actually thought something was wrong with my steering here. I got out and had a look, and then I realised the ground, when you walk on it, it's like a waterbed. It's just literally compressing down so much. There's so much mud under here. As soon as you break through, of course, that happens. And as, of course, is last in the convoy, so a few cars go over it, and poor old Laz is just absolutely stuck. Right out. Luckily this time it's a pretty straightforward pull on the rumber to get the 79 series moving. But things are about to get a whole lot harder. This looks like the first of the swamp country up through here. It's all open and the telltale giveaway is heaps of tea tree plants around here. Usually it indicates some pretty sloppy conditions. One of those instances though where it's probably a bit of a benefit to go first. A few vehicles start to go over, the track starts to give away, and then people get really involved. Soot through, just. But the boys are going to have to give it the berries if they want to get out of this one without the winch rope. Get into it, boys. Yeah! All right, boys, listen to the V8 roar. <laughs> oh. I think I created. Oh, no, he's going out. He's going up. Oh. Oh. Choose your own adventure. Oh, yeah. That thing sounds good. First little bit of mud and we're going into swamp country now. Mm -hmm. So that's the first of many. Plenty more to come. And the vehicles have all got different paint jobs on them. It's nice little black mud. Boots are off for most of us. <laughs> we've got mud up to our knees. I can't wait. Let's get right into it because there's a barrel hole up here. If we can get to it, we might even get a cast. During the wet season, tracks like this become completely undrivable. And it doesn't take long for nature to start reclaiming the track. Just following the mud map that Rob's drawn us. It's um, it's actually pretty good, believe it or not. I think there's another crossing somewhere around here. This is almost the end of this road. Yep, we should be going directly left, but it's pretty thick scrub. I think I'll just go a little bit further down. Hard, you gotta sort of find your way around. It's, it's quite overgrown. There's logs down, There's the grass is quite high. 
somewhere here there's another river on our left there's one on our right as well i have to make a left turn i hope it's obvious i'll turn down here and there should be a place to cross this creek hopefully it's not too deep i don't think anyone this season has been across yet so we might have a work cut out after a bit of searching, we found the crossing. It looks suspiciously boggy, but it's hard to say without walking it. And around here, it's not really a safe option. Now the water behind me here is 100% fresh, but there is a 100% chance there are saltwater crocodiles in here. Um, they're all through these rivers, right through. So it's paid to be quite sensitive to that. And it looks really boggy in there and quite deep. So wish me luck. Sometimes you've just got to suck it and see, but with twin lockers and big tyres, I'm hoping Sooty can just blast through this short crossing. Things start well, but I can feel some deeper ruts hidden in the mud, and suddenly Sooty's sinking like a stone. What looked like a firm bank has turned into a wall of mud and I'm now stuck with the back half of Sooty well and truly underwater. There's no time to waste here and Soot's starting to fill up quick. And because I'm stuck on this side of the river, it looks like I'm going to have to do a solo recovery mission. Deep on that side. This obviously must have been existing ruts the way they showed up, eh? Well, there you go, I didn't think that little tree would pull it. Going forwards doesn't look like it's going to work, and with Sooty filling up, we've got to think very fast. Oh, nah, 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 that's burying it. You're going down further. You might need to pull me backwards. I'm going to have to pull Sean back, he's fully slipped up the crossing. Ooh. Ready? Crocs are no joke around here. In fact, a local was fatally attacked by a salty just a couple of days ago in the area but I've got no choice but to wade in. I'm well off the line now and it's gone a total slop. Bye -bye. And to add insult to injury, Sooty started to float, meaning I'm at the full mercy of Jesse's winch. Well, this has got pretty wild pretty quick. Sean's car is now facing down the creek. There's pretty much water over his bonnet. I'm hooked up to him, Pete's hooked up to me. It's all happening. Hopefully we can get him out. I'll tell you what, it's a struggle. Yeah, we're looking. Yeah, it's about to pop up now. I think you're gonna start coming back pretty soon. A little crossing didn't look like much. We maybe even got a bit complacent and um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the guy. This, this got wild real quick. And your flares come off too. Yeah, look, hold there for a sec. That was wild. Yeah, it just got... Like a little crossing that I thought was nothing. I nearly made it. I yeah, it. you were literally out the first time, I yeah. Know. I know, but it just, it just digs up really easy. Yeah. Not too bad. There's a, there's a water bug in my car. Get him out. Ah, oh, the water mark's there. That's pretty, pretty good. You can see it there on the angle. Right, like that was underwater. Right yeah, like that's just down there. That drawer's dry, luckily. No, Considering, yeah. Yeah. And it, you didn't get any water in the drawers and the water level was pretty much above them. Well, I'll just get this map out. <laughs> didn't get it wet, did you? Not too wet. The, the middle's a bit wet. You can see where the water line was on the map. But um, I don't know about you guys, but I think that crossing to get all of us through. Pretty wild. Yeah, I think not, we'll dig it out a hell of a lot and um, we'll probably be here for a few hours and that really cuts into barra fishing time. So I'm suggesting maybe we look at Rob's map I can find another way through the yep. river, come back around. He suggested a couple of spots. The barra hunt remains. It's still barrelless, <laughs> mind you. I had one in the front seat for a little bit, but he got out. So <laughs> <laughs> I reckon we'll turn around and head back up the river. And fingers crossed, 
we'll find a better spot to cross. Yeah. All right. Good work. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Sounds good. <laughs> We've got a couple of spots marked as potential crossing points, but that means taking this access track, which looks pretty treacherous as well. Oh, Jesse, copy? Yeah, mate, looks a bit muddy up there. Glad I'm not first. <laughs> Muddy's the half of it, mate. I think there's li lily pads in the track. Maybe just wait here and see how it go. Yeah, good luck, mate. Good luck. I think you're gonna need it. Oh, I can't see a thing. Too much water. Slow down. I can't see. Oh, look. I'm through. I'm through. The vehicle's just got a full car wash. I had to slow down because there's too much water going on my windscreen. Water going everywhere. Oh, we're off the track. We're off the track. <laughs> <laughs> Black soil sections like this can feel rock solid for the first time you put wheels over it, but it only takes a few vehicles to go through to break through the surface. And by the time Pete comes through, the ground is starting to open up. I don't know if you saw me go through that. I was in third low and it just stopped on me and uh, had to snatch second. Just in the middle there, got really, really soft. So probably a good time to uh, arc the V8 up and, and give it a hell. No worries, mate. What do you reckon? Couple lockers or? Mate, I'd flick them on. You bought them, use them. No worries, mate. I'll flick them both on and uh, wish me luck. The big 200 is the fourth vehicle across and Liam has barely even hit the start of the ruts before he's in strife. <laughs> I'm down. Yeah, you were fine. Uh, it's like soup. With the surface of the mud broken, the 200 has literally buried itself to the chassis rails. William is stuck up to his eyeballs, so I'm just gonna run the run rip out and uh, give him a little winch backwards and see how he goes the second time round. Oh, he's pulling me forward. Oi! Oh. What was that, the winch rope? Yeah. That was a big bang. He is bloody stuck. The tyres are so deep in the mud that they've turned the 200 into a massive anchor and the forces are just too strong for a straight line pull. Definitely can't park there. I think the plan is not to go backwards but to go forwards. He's sort of committed now. Problem is the vehicle's really, really stuck. I wouldn't mind trying to recover it out this way, try and get it at least two tyres up on the high side get it out of that sort of black soil, um, maybe a double line pull because this is very stuck and very heavy. When you go down in black soil country, it's no joke. And as you can see, we've thrown everything at this recovery. Double line pulls on two extensions plus max tracks under the tires. If this doesn't work, we might be in trouble. Hopefully we can just get that vehicle to suck out of the mud. That's a hard bit. Hopefully. I don't think you have any front drive. Is that a diff lock? Yeah, that's better. better. You got drive now. Bit of drive. 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 Yeah, drive, drive, drive. drive. Oh. oh, that was CV. CV, uh, gone. And that is how stuck it is. Okay. Yeah. It's just gone from pretty casual to being downright pain now. Had a little feeling this morning that things might have got a little bit out of hand today with the amount of water around. I did think probably we'd be at the barrow hole at about lunchtime, maybe I'd make a little nice feed, go down there, catch a couple of barrow for dinner, pick the perfect campsite. Something tells me we'll be digging sandy mud until dark and sleeping somewhere along here. That's my prediction now. But there's one more trick up our sleeves that might just work. You, you've probably seen us do this before. Use the spare as a bit of a, a lever. So we're winching off the spare so we can actually try and pull the vehicle up and not through the mud. Um, it's worked successfully in this sort of black soil stuff before, but we've got two winches on this one as well. We've got max tracks underneath. We've dug as much as we can. This sand stuff, I mean, it just keeps falling back into the hole. So it's almost pointless digging here, but fingers crossed it comes out. It's got a broken CV. We need to get it out. We've got the camera vehicle and the 79 hooked up to the 200 and the max tracks under the rear wheel to provide a ramp. Well, here goes nothing, I guess. 
but the mud is refusing to let the vehicle go. There it comes. Oh. Oh. So close, that tyre was working a treat. Was a... That, it, was, it was working. Here, let me tie it. With the 79's rope tied for a second time, it's rinse and repeat with this technique. It really wants to come, our idea is sort of working. You can see the back of the car lifting up, but there's so much strain there. We just keep breaking out this rope because he's pulling the most of it. So um, we're going to put a tree trunk protector over the top of the tire so the rope's actually pulling in. And uh, hopefully we can get that. Sean's going to fix the hook up. We think that might be breaking the rope. Fingers crossed we can get it out because Sean's getting towed for this barrel hole, I can tell. Coming though. In these situations, you've got to keep adapting your recovery oh, technique. Man. This time, we're going to try a double line pull to the tree trunk protector. It's out. Yeah. Oh, oh, top, oh, top, top, top. Yes. That's a huge win. This is what we're dealing with here. That's that's how deep it is. And this is a flat ground, keep in mind. And it's just bottomless through here. It's that real sandy stuff too. It's just the most horrible stuff to get bogged in. That's a win. Now we're going to fix the CV and still get through here. With the 200 back on dry ground, it's time to take a look at the front end. Spare CVs are a part of what we bring for all IFS vehicles, and hopefully this will be a simple repair. But as the shaft comes out, it seems like the problem might be elsewhere. It's not broken. When we put the locker on, that should have not been able to spin. Hang on. Yeah. Dude, like, this is different, this is... Yeah, because yeah, aftermarket exactly. CVs have like the three randy balls, this one will have like the six ball bearing thing in them probably. So that really balls, goes up and go up and down with it. See that? Yeah, it's got to go up and down because it goes up and down with the suspension. Like, yeah. Hold that. It'll just be... See? Oh, yeah. And I think like, it's either something internal or on the other side because with that front locker and that shouldn't spin. That should be locked up. It's the first time I've been disappointed to pull a CV out and find it's not broken. What we think's happened is the intermediate shaft has actually snapped. And if that's the case, we can't fix it. So this CV is going to go back in and um, Liam's now in three wheel drive for the rest of this one. The intermediate shaft is a little piece of axle that sits between the front diff and your outer CV. Now at the moment, there's no point taking the whole front end apart because we don't have a replacement. So Liam's is going to have to use all his lockers so he can have three wheel drive. He's definitely not out of the game yet, but we'll need to find another line to get him through this crossing. Before we send Liam along the new line, we're testing it out with a camera vehicle, but things don't go well. We're going straight to a double line pull this time with a higher winch angle and it's working a treat. Drive! Yeah, have a drive, yeah. The side track is clearly not an option, so it's back to sending it down the guts. <sighs> so hard to tell what line to take because it's all about the same. The whole ground moves like a waterbed. But I think I'm just going to come through here, back out into there and scoot through to the finish line. That's the plan. <laughs> I don't think that ZD could rev any harder. No, it's on it. Well, that was how not to do it. I hope you boys watched that quite well. Yeah. I reckon we might uh, chuck Liam back in front so we've still got a car behind him yeah, if it I'll turns to uh, turns to mush again. Send him through. The second time around, Liam isn't taking any chances. With a 200 in three wheel drive, he's gonna give it all the berries to get through this one. That's good. That was very good. good. Imagine See, they did that like three hours yeah. ago. <laughs> oh yeah. my word. 
Now, let's hope he hasn't made huge big holes for us. Poor eyes. Yeah. He's, he's up he's the rear. He's the short straw. Exactly right, and it's not always fun up there. So let's just, <laughs> fingers crossed, eh? Pull it harder than you ever pulled before, mate. Go on, go. She's getting boggy. Yes! Got it, got it. Still going, slippery. Woo! It's really bogging and you can just oh, tell yeah. by the, you can tell by the cars are bogging down at the end. That's, That's a around. win. That's a good drive. It's not even dark and we're gonna get off this bit. <laughs> to the know, next one. To the next one, we don't know what's around the corner. That's the only downside. But it's a monumental effort by all. The barrow spot Robbie sending us out to is right at the back of the property, but to get there, we'll still need to find a point to cross that creek. But after a few more hours, we still haven't found an option. According to our mud map, we're within a few kilometres of the barrow hole, but the track's not getting any easier. Up ahead is another swampy crossing. There are a few lines still visible from last season, but none of them look real good. Well, it's pretty boggy up here. Have to go for it, I think. Oh, I just made that. Ooh, too easy, Sean, mate. Mate, I just made that. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Bit of a run up. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> oh, is he making it? I know what you mean about just making that, Sean. Pete. Oh. <laughs> oh, Pete, you make it. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, go, go, go. Come on. Go, go, go. Off you go. Yeah. Go. Ha <laughs> ha. Well done, mate, well done. Bit of a different line there. As is last in the convoy and in these conditions, that puts him at the highest risk of bogging down. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. He's down. Oh. <laughs> I'm down, I'm down. And for yet another time today, the winches are coming out. Oh, it is so boggy. Hey, Jesse, you got a gobby, mate? Yeah, mate, got a gobby. <laughs> Try not to get bogged, but um, sun's starting to get a bit low, mate. What do you reckon? We find a place to roll out a bit of canvas? Yeah, that sounds good to me. We've earned a couple of beers around the campfire tonight. It's been an awesome day for day one. I know. What an introductory to Cape York, eh? It doesn't get much better than that. Now, we couldn't kick off the barrage just yet, but the day isn't over. If we can find a spot, even heck, maybe near a bit of water, we might be in with like half a chance. Yeah, we're going to camp beside the creek just far enough away from the crocodiles from the camp and uh, yeah, maybe even catch a bear with the Sava. With the sun quickly setting on the horizon, it looks like finding a crossing won't be possible today. But luckily, just on dark, we find a perfect spot to pull up for the night. We're still very much at the southern end of Cape York and if the water levels are this bad down here, I can only imagine what lies ahead of us further north. For now though, we've got a camp, a fire and some cold ones in the fridge. And frankly, this is about as good as it gets. And hopefully tomorrow we can spend more time on the fishing rods than on the end of a winch line. Hope you guys are enjoying our Cape York episode. Probably no surprises to you that right now I'm actually changing a starter motor in Sooty because there is so much Cape York water still in that vehicle, it's not funny. But I just want to interrupt today's episode just to let you know that Snatch has a brand new winter range on the website. So hoodies just like this one of all the warm stuff, beanies, you name it, on the website. Jump in quick so you don't miss out. Get yourself kitted up for winter at fullwheeldrive247.com. 
our mates over at Steady have a huge competition whereby the winner is going to get $3,000 to spend up big on the Steady website on anything they want. So imagine the lights you could get on your rig for that. I'm talking about spotties, light bars, camp lights, underbody rock lights, you name it, switches. They've got so many cool things on that website and you could spend up big up to the tune of $3,000. Now to be in the draw for this insane comp, trust me you want to do this, jump on the Steady website, steady.com.au. Make sure you upload a pic of your rig and uh, fill in all the details and then you're automatically in the draw. And make sure you're also following their social media so you can be updated along the way. Winners will be drawn on the 8th of September and good luck. Our camp last night was by the edge of the river and not far ahead of camp is a crossing that looks like it could be the one. We've been testing the waters as we go, but Barra can be a pretty elusive fish, and so far, we haven't had any luck. That's all the more reason to push on to the secret spot we've been told about. Now, a lot of you guys will know I'm running a Red Arc Go block in the back of Sooty here. Now, a lot of people probably are wondering, how do you keep on top of the state of charge and your battery status when you've got a battery box in the back? Well, it's pretty easy. Thanks to the Red Arc app, I can actually see exactly what my state of charge is. So as you can see, 78% first thing in the morning. And that's pretty good considering I've only got one battery box. It's a 100 amp hour lithium battery in there. Been running on the fridge. I've had a bit of music playing around camp last night. All my camp lights on and I've got a stack of charge still left in that battery. And the cool thing as well about having an app, you can check it anywhere. When you're driving, have it up in the phone cradle. You can actually see the state of charge coming back in. How long you've got until that battery's full. How many amps you're drawing from all your accessories. So you can really keep on top of your 12 volt system. As his winch rope has seen some hard use over the last few weeks, and given what could be ahead, he's taken the opportunity to swap in a new rope. Just outside of camp, we're up on the crossing. If we can make it over, the barrel hole we've been trying to find should be almost within reach. Oh yeah, it's the crossing. Big sandbank on the other side. <laughs> it's gonna be a challenge. Flying pretty quick. Who's walking it? No one. <laughs> I, think. <laughs> I don't think. I'm not, unless you are. <laughs> Crocs usually don't like rapids. That's a general rule. But I, I might just try and drive it and, <laughs> and not walk it. Good idea, I reckon, yeah. With the car going through. It scares the crocs away anyway, so you'd be safe to come in and recover oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true, it's true. I'm not oh, yeah. laughing because I'm making this up. But it's just, it's true. <laughs> Magic buttons. I'm going to leave that seat belt off in case I need to bail. You know what? I'm taking, the, I'm taking the thongs off too. We can't be risking a plugger. Driving a crossing I haven't walked is something I really don't like having to do, especially when it's this remote. But luckily, this time around, there's no hidden surprises in the creek. Very rocky. Rob's given us a bit of a mission to do some track clearing as we go. And this paper bark needs some pruning to open up the exit. Nice! Sean's cleared the path there, he's gonna push it up the other side. He's made easy work at the bank. Nice drop. You get that? Yeah. A couple of big holes here. Pretty keen to get the D-Max through and give it a bit of a clean. She's making a few noises after all the mud yesterday. That was pretty cool. Big wheel lift as Jesse came through there. There was a bit of Dakar meets the top end. That was cool to see. Let's do it! With the rest of the convoy clear of the crossing, I've only got one thing on my mind, and that's to finally catch a barra. Fingers crossed anyway. Oh, didn't have to jump into some croc infested waters. It's always a nice feeling. With the creek behind us, we finally are able to link up to our goal, a stretch of river primed for catching barra and the lines have barely touched the water before we get our first bite. Yeah, little one. That's it, that's it. 
First buzzer. Well done. On the board. Well, that's really cool for many reasons. A barra and Azza's first one. A little bit too small to keep, but it's a really good sign. How good's that? I've got to work a little bit harder to get one to bite, but after exploring a bit further up the river, I'm on the board as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Beautiful little chromey barra. It's probably just legal too. Not a bad little fish for got a couple of casts around here. I might let him go. There really isn't anything quite like the feeling of catching a barra. And while we might not have gotten any trophy fish this time around, it's been worth the effort to make it out here. With our side mission a success, it's time we push north and head to our ultimate destination, the old telly track at the top of Australia. Rob, back at Han River, has just given us word that the roads are starting to open and the water levels are dropping to just about passable levels. So with that, we point our noses towards the PDR. I know of a wicked little camp spot just off the west coast that'll make for the perfect spot for us to pull up camp along the way. But as we head north, the amount of water only increases and when we make it near the coast, we come across some of the most hectic road conditions I've seen in a long time. come up to a really large water crossing that um, separates us from where we want to get to camp tonight. It's one of the longest water crossings I've ever attempted. So I'm going to ease into this one. It looks like it's a really firm base, but seatbelt is coming off. Window is coming down, just in case. You never know if you need to bail. <laughs> right, here we go. Yeah, it's a nice firm base. It's good, you wouldn't want to get this wrong though. Yeah, this is a bizarre feeling, boys. You just, I feel like I'm in a boat right now, not in a full drive. I think it's getting deeper as well. This is wild. <laughs> I've got the perfect little bow wave in front of soot. I'm just gonna paddle onto this one, boys, and uh, be washed in the shore. Lucky it's got a hard bottom. You wouldn't want to get stuck in that one. Let's hope she doesn't float. <laughs> wow. Yep, she's going under. Decent little bow wave going. <laughs> As Sean said, I think I'm in a boat right now. This is wild. Coming up over the bottom of the D-Max. <laughs> hey Pete, you reckon you could stop in the middle and show us how those bilge pumps work? <laughs> not this trip, buddy, not this trip. This is one of the more insane things you can do in a four-wheel drive. And of course, there's no way we could attempt it without a snorkel and some high amount of diff breathers installed. How cool is that? <laughs> it's definitely deep. It's getting deeper. That's the deep part there, good job, mate. Just pushing up. Oh, she's on the bonnet. <laughs> yeah, good time. With everyone through safely, we get our first glimpse of the spectacular west coast of Cape York. Well, this is a bit of a welcome change. I've been in the scrub for so many days now, and I decided I'd treat the boys to a bit of a coastal campsite. Have a go at this, eh? Sand, I haven't seen that for a little while. We're gonna go that way. This is Penny Father, just down here. Beautiful little camp spot. None of these fellas have been down here before, so we'll take them down here. Hopefully early in the season, there shouldn't be too many campers as well. You gotta find a nice little bit of paradise and maybe, just maybe, you might be able to get a fish before I do a little cook up tonight. The western side of Cape York is far more protected from the wind and swells that the eastern side get. And it makes for great camping and fishing opportunities right the way up. Most of the coastal areas here are managed by local traditional owners and a bit of research is required before you try and visit. But when you can get camps like this all to yourself, it's absolutely worth the effort. Well, 
how good is this? Bit of a change of pace coming down to the beach. And if you don't reckon this is a decent campsite, you better check your pulse. This is unbelievable. We've got the ocean on that side. We've got Penny Father down there. Multiple fishing opportunities. I mean, heck, if you had a tinny down here, you'd be probably camped up for about two weeks. But for us, we're just gonna crack a couple of beers, maybe just soak it all in, if we're lucky. We uh, still have an ingredient to catch for the main meal tonight. So, fingers crossed we can sort that out. Make no mistake, this is big croc country and you want to be putting your camp well back from the water's edge. Plus, of course, keep an eye out when fishing near the water's edge. There's no such thing as a bad campsite in Cape York, but the West Coast truly is on a whole nother level. Oh. <laughs> I need to be about, I don't know, two foot bigger than that. <laughs> Good fun little game fish. Nice fighting, bit of fun. Oh. And I'll tell you what, we've got about 30 fish between us. They're absolutely everywhere. It's a fish of cast. It's all going on. It's getting a little bit dark, a little bit crocky. So we might pack it in. Hopefully the boys got a fire going. I could smell something up there. Oh, these are so cool. So much fun. They're not big. We're not breaking any records, but we're having a hell of a lot of fun. One more, no more. Yeah, you got it. I'm going to do one more too. <laughs> Cooking on as a setup is an absolute breeze with heaps of prep space to work with and modular storage to keep all his cooking and camping gear organized. We've caught our fair share of fish this afternoon, but nothing that size for eating. So for dinner tonight, I'm gonna to need to come up with a bit of a backup option. Well, what a spot. Absolute winner of a spot, this one. Penny Father, been here a couple of times and never ceases to amaze. Now tonight's meal actually revolved around a certain ingredient that had scales. Unfortunately, not many of those in the fridge, but that's not gonna stop me from cooking up an absolute mean feed tonight. What are you guys? Probably don't know this, but the fish don't just bite during the day, they also bite at night, so bear with me. Ooh, what do we got in here? Yeah, that'll do us. Well, that's not too bad at all. A sneaky cast in the right spot, well, you can get exactly what you need for a cook up. Now, you gotta admit, there's a lot of camp lights going on in this vehicle, but it just kind of works. You get your camp lights right, and it just changes the whole feel of a campsite. I reckon camp lights and a good fire is the key to a really, really fun camp. Now, the only problem is though, Liam might have seen me grab a couple of things out of his fridge. Anyway, let's start the cook up. Now, you're probably thinking, what have we got? We've got finger mark, threadfin salmon, queenie, barramundi. Neither of those, we have Woolies chicken <laughs> because you know what? It still work really well though. Hey, here you go, mate. Oh, I'm going good, I'm the, going good, the yeah. The alarm just went off. You're diving into that one, are you? Yeah, just jump in the Dometic. Look at this, mate. We have no fish fit in it. Oh. Look at that, that's a barra fillet. That's a funny one. looking barra fillet. I see what you had the rod out and you come back to cook, but <laughs> I don't know what's going on well, there? I'm gonna do a curry because if you're out in the top end and maybe you don't catch enough fish to feed everyone, a little curry will actually make that fish go a long way. Yeah, so that makes sense, yeah. Take that on board, mate. You can, you can fire her up a bit if you want. I reckon only one person should indulge in <laughs> fistful of breast. That's, <laughs> and that's me tonight, mate. Oh, I'm happy with that. <laughs> and what's the plan when we eat the chicken, get Liam to turn his lights off so we can't see if it's cooked or not? <laughs> this will go a long way, though. Mate, when I said turn that up, it needs to sound like a TV. Oh, I'm on so... Absolute limit, you know, I, did, I wanted to go flat out, because I always go flat out, but I thought you'd, you thought you'd up no, me. Sometimes, Jesse, when, you, when you're driving a hill like this one, mate, <laughs> handfuls of breast around you. I suppose we're on the yeah, sand, so we need a fair bit to go. go. Full tilt. We're going to basically cook those for about three minutes, and then I'll start adding some other ingredients. Yep. Giving that a little bit of a wash, as you can see, mate. Oh, yep. Now, the key is when you deal with raw chicken, now give it a little bit of a bush wash, but and then flip it over. Flip it over. That's and something I've learned from you. Use the other side. There's still a bit of chicken on that one. That's, that's okay. <laughs> Mate, we're all tough out here tonight. I'm going to jump back into the Dometic. Radio. And this is where things get absolutely wild. It's looking cooked on the outside. So we're off to a good start. <laughs> these ones. Righto. You need a hand over there, mate? Or? If you just shut the, you shut the, the lid, eh? Shut the lid because 
Well, I've got all the ingredients in one go. You can't muck around, yeah. mate. That's like when you bring the shopping in from the cart. You've got to do it in one go, <laughs> exactly. otherwise you're not a man. Exactly right. You said if you don't catch much fish, a good way to make it go a long way is a curry. Yep. I'm just thinking, how does a fisherman of your calibre know that? You know, you would have never really had that problem, would you? There's been times, There's mate. been times? There's been times where right, I've yeah. been lean pickings out there. <laughs> I'll start introducing some other bits and pieces. Here we go. A bit of garlic, four of those. This is minced ginger, it makes it really easy. You don't want to overpower it with ginger, so we'll just... That much? Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Lemongrass. Oh, look at that. That's nice and fine. Going in. Bang. Got a couple of chilies. I'm going to grab those out. But there's a lot of seeds in there. He's, he's looking after us, he reckons. Yeah, but chicken stock cube. I yeah. thought that said vegan on the top. I was getting no. worried about it. Vegeta, that's it. <laughs> Jesse, don't worry, mate. I'm, not, I'm looking out for you, blokes. Crumble that little dude in there. This is a Thai red curry. We're doing a red curry tonight. Okay. Oh, smell that. Yeah, that's got a bit of rally about it. Probably about a quarter of this jar, I reckon. And we can always add a bit more later on. Give that a little stir up. Now right. the flavours, the smells, holy heck, it's all coming together. Bit of salt and pepper. You know when your drawers have been underwater, the salt comes out in big <laughs> chunks like that. Coconut cream, gonna go straight in. A bit of fish sauce, like one tap. Oh, that was too... I don't think you can do tap measurements with liquid. Yeah, it's hard. Palm sugar. That'll sweeten her up just a little bit. I'm using shallots. I'll do the bottom bits first, and I'll keep that for later on. Chuck those straight in. Yeah, you can put whatever you want in here, really. I just suggest some green. I don't think oh. you're supposed to put that in there, mate. <laughs> Always take that off yeah, first. Yeah, take the, take, the, take the wrapper out. <laughs> the barcode, you just don't need that in there. Bit of go about it. Oh, that's nice. No, nice? no, it's really nice. That's got all the flavours that have just come together. You know, you just you pack the ultimate scrum. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what that is. Okay. It's all together and they're all working as a team. So I want to clean this up, mate. Get some rice on the go. Yeah. Come back in three minutes with a three plate. Three minutes, yeah. And uh, we'll be serving up. Beautiful. Sounds good. All right, that is looking so good. Now, you saw me use some of those packet rices up. I used a little bit of olive oil, a bit of garlic, and um, I've chucked a couple of those shallots in there as well. Basically, juiced it right up, mate. It's been about three minutes, I'm back. Well, it's looking really good. We can call the boys in, mate. It's smelling good. All right, grubs up. Didn't take that long to cook as well. No, that nice, was easy relatively one. quick. It's yeah. only what? 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Not even. talking about this barramundi curry all day, mate. Exactly yeah, right. It? It's, it's almost, you know they say like most fish just taste like chicken. It's just like that. Oh, it's chicken sort of looks like it too. <laughs> chicken of the sea, mate. I'll get some rice first. Oh, that smells very good. Mm. Mm. Smell the garlic. We, we got, got in your way. Yeah. <laughs> the man with the lights. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Some coriander. Uh, coriander boys. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I think it has one in mine too. Yeah. Not for everyone. No, yeah. You can't for everyone. give it away, mate. A little bit of chili. <laughs> um, as is going to have mine too. Hey, I've spoken chili, about it. Chili. Oh, oh, chili. Yeah. We'll take some chili. We'll take some chili. Yeah, I think it's, there's a correlation between those. Are like coriander and chili. That is what it should look like, folks. I'll mate. tell you what, mate, you've ticked off your first barra. Unfortunately, yeah, it would have been better. There was no barra in here, there's no <laughs> finger marks, there's no mangrove jack, there's no jew, but guess what? It'll do. The next best thing. <laughs> Bit of off chicken, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I reckon we go sit around the fire, enjoy this one. There's plenty of leftovers as well. Yep. That's unreal. Sounds good. It's so it good, boys. Good. Oh, mate. Cheers. Great job, mate. Mm. Cheers. Guys, the Sydney 4x4 show is only one week away. I can't wait. It's going to be on from the weekend of the 14th to the 16th of July. If you're keen to go and you haven't got your tickets yet, make sure you jump on it quick at 4x4show.com.au and hey, if you use the discount code 4WD247, get a little bit of a discount as well. Come down and say day. I'm going to be there all weekend. Plus, there's going to be a whole bunch of awesome four-wheel drives and some cool camping products to check out. Also, there'll be some discounts on a whole bunch of that gear as well. So, if you're keen to top up the back of your four-wheel drive with some brand new camping gear, this weekend coming up is the perfect time to do it. I can't wait. I'll see you there. The only thing better than waking up in a place like this is grabbing a fishing rod and casting a line when you wake up. <laughs> Bloody fought really well. Jumping all over the place.
Absolutely spectacular morning this morning at the Penny Father. I'm gonna call, I think it's probably the best camp of the trip I reckon, it's just, it's unreal, it's mind blowing. I've noticed Az is over there having a cook up on the back of the big mitts truck, so I reckon I'm gonna grab some stuff out of my fridge, walk over there and throw it on while he's not looking so he can do the cooking and I can keep walking around looking at this unreal campsite. Pull out pantry, wow, I like this Az, this is very cool. Good, eh? I found all your hidden treasures. Cooking on as a setup is an absolute breeze, with heaps of prep space to work with and modular storage to keep all his cooking and camping gear organised. Mm. What a way to start the day, eh? Oh. From our camp here at the mouth of the Penny Father, we've still got at least another 500 kilometres ahead of us to make it to the tip of Cape York. But between us and our destination lies the Cape's most famous track, the Old Telly. It is the next item on our list. After a few hours up through Batavia Downs and on the PDR, we've made it to Bramwell Junction and the start of arguably one of the best four-wheel drive tracks in Australia. For three of the guys in our convoy, this is the first time seeing the old telly and this year promises to be one to remember as we're amongst the first four-wheel drives to be attempting it for the season. I hope you're enjoying those dry seats that you got now, mate, because something tells me it's going to be pretty wet on this track. Yeah, I reckon it will be. When I see this little sign up in front of me, I know we're in for a good time and uh, I'm happy to get a wet seat because I love this track. It's been my third time doing it and I'm super keen to do it early. Looking forward to it. It's been on the bucket list for years. Well, mate, there's a lot of hype about this track and for good reason too. It really is one of the most iconic tracks in the country. Look at that. Water straight out of Bramwell we're in the mud. We're going to have a work cut out for us, I think. How good is this? Something that I've wanted to do for a long time. We're finally on the telly track. The old telly after the wet season is no joking matter. At this time of the year, the track is full of deep and committing crossings, and flooding a vehicle if you get stuck is a real danger. Less than a K into the track, we hit our first test, and it's an absolute doozy. Okay, everything nice, high and dry. I think so. Oh, crappies. You can, you can body surf that. It's gonna get deep. Here's the hole here. Oh, she's deep. Oh. Water in. No one can. He's, he's using the bow wave to reverse oh, back. <laughs> Look at that. What's the go? You gonna, you gonna poke it in again with a bit more go? I can have a, I can have a real go. And um, just be quick on that winch. Yeah, copy, copy. Yeah, about two minutes into the old telly. You can hear that? It's got water in my feet. Little foot spa down the bottom of soot. It's gonna be one of those trips, I think. Well, that hole there was a lot softer than we thought. I think there's a bit of silt there Sean's got to push out. So we're just gonna run an extension out. So if he does get stuck and he needs to go forwards, we can do it quickly to try and limit the water in his car. Got a little extension here so we can clip the winch on the end and uh, hopefully we're quick to get him out of the water. Did that turn off? Yep. I'd hope some momentum would help Sooty right. clear a path, but I'm going nowhere. And what's more worrying, the engine just switched off. Not exactly what you want in more than a metre of water. Yep, I can't diagnose it here, so I'm just going to have to try and rely on the winch and battery to get up onto dry ground. I just want to check that air box before I turn it Yeah, do you want me to check it now that you're out a little bit yeah, less water? Because it, well, it turn itself off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just taking precautions, soot turned off when I went into that deep water, had heaps of water come up the windscreen, and I wouldn't be surprised a little bit when that airbox, so don't want to start it up again until I can be sure that that's nice and dry. Now the first thing you want to do in this situation is look inside the airbox and make sure your filter's not wet, because if any water has gotten through the filter and into the intake of the engine, you could be in for a real drama. The worst yeah. thing you can do is try and turn the engine on, because that water will go inside your intake and you could hydro lock your engine. Yeah, I thought that was wet. Yeah. No, that's dry. That's a good, that's a good sign. <laughs> it could be time for a new filter though, Sean. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, sucking the guts out of it. Yeah, do you have one on board? <laughs> Righto, chuck that back in. Didn't want to start her up again until I just checked that airbox, make sure it's not full of water. Good news is it is dry, so I'll try and turn it over and that'll make winching a lot easier. Do have lots of water in here though, but you know what, vinyl floors, it's all part and parcel. It's better to get it nice and wet on the first crossing, therefore everything else after that, not too worried about it. 
Well, that's good news. I bet you got a smile on your face now. I certainly do. What I reckon happened here was just a case of too much water over the bonnet and it actually blocked air from getting into the engine, causing the engine to turn off. Just a little bit of an interior wash. You know the water crosses a bit deep when you've got uh, water in your door card pocket. Well, it's not too bad, all said and done. Um, vinyl floor, sort of built for this stuff. All valuable stuff up nice and high. It's a good little tip when you come to Cape York. You never know, your first water crossing could be the one that just completely floods the vehicle. Look at that. It's actually clean. Clean earth, if you're <laughs> There's a nice little practice run for the recovery team as well. <laughs> I, think, I think we're ready for it. Ready for Cape York. Let's go. <laughs> Righty-o, thanks bring it there, mate. Good luck. Uh, thanks, buddy. I need you uh, to be super quick on that winch right because I don't know. She's pretty soft in the bottom. Oh. Being from Victoria, Pete knows wet conditions and his GU has bilge pumps fitted for situations just like this. Today it looks like they might come in pretty handy. <laughs> There's so much water in there. <laughs> it's actually working. Well, Pete got a little bit of water in his car. Obviously, took these bilge pumps a while to prime, but you can see now they're primed up. Next crossing, they're going to work perfect. Lucky he's got vinyl floors too. <laughs> As is up next, he's seen myself and Pete go down. He'll be trying to hope that we've got a bit of the silt up there. He's a nice heavy vehicle. See how I he goes. I think he said he's going for third time lucky, so. Third time lucky. Yeah. Nothing might, ever goes right. wrong when you say that. <laughs> Just gonna go second gear. See if I'm gonna punch it out. Here he goes, here he goes. In the hole, over the bonnet, now. Oh, oh he has oh. that. Another oh. inch, another inch. We're on. <laughs> Oh no, the bow wave's got me! Oh, oh, oh. The other water. Have you got it so far? Ah. Much. There you go. Right through this. <laughs> hey boys. <laughs> like a fish bowl yeah. in here. Oh, oh. A little bit of water in there, eh? Not too much, eh? As when that bow wave came back at you, oh. it, was, yeah. it was about that far under the window. Oh, yeah. That's pretty awesome. I thought you had it when you first went I in, thought, but yeah. it stopped you quick, yeah, eh? I know. Good news is, this isn't even one of the main creeks. Yeah, the, not, the, no one even talks about this normally. That's not even a thing. The first challenge is up this way. <laughs> the good news is, more than half of us have wet seats, wet floors, and wet just about everything. Yeah. It's only up from here, boys. <laughs> All right. Speaking of, around the corner is an absolute belter, the infamous Palm Creek. Well, we're on the impression that four people this season have successfully driven the old telly tractor. Mm. We come to Palm Creek, no one no has driven done. this. It's no going to be way. pretty cool yeah. doing this first, I reckon. First up for the year. This is the worst I've ever seen it too, mind you. It's very, very steep. It's like a... Last year it was like a mini gunshot. This one's even steeper. Yeah, it's it's, even steeper, it's yeah. full vertical yeah. here. The thing is, you've got quicksand down the bottom. You've got a bunch of rocks here. You've got a fallen tree down there. And then you've got about, I don't know, a metre deeper mud to yeah. winch yourself through it down at the end. So we'll be right. We've well, got our work cut out for us though. I think what we're going to do is sort of plan ahead a little bit. So what I'm talking about is maybe winch sooty down into it. And at the same time, have the front winch already out because I reckon that ball bar is going to yeah. be about a foot deep in that mud. Good idea. Down the bottom. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, <laughs> the plan works. A side-by-side -side comparison shows you just how different it is this year compared to last. The drop-off is so much steeper and the mud down the bottom is just endless and hasn't been cleared out yet. The entry to Palm Creek can cause a lot of damage if your vehicle slides into one of the banks. So we're gonna run a rear winch from the D-Max to Sooty for a bit more extra control. And as you can see, with the first vehicle going down, it's nothing short of vertical. Because we might get some shovels actually and start breaking some of this up too. Well, this is new, Jesse. Oh, I've never needed to uh, winch down in a Palm Creek before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what I'm doing here, seems a little bit over the top, but 
I think the way the vehicle is going to talk when it goes down here, it's going to be resting on this side a hell of a lot. So I don't want those mirrors to fold into the door or potentially wreck my mirrors. I know they're tough, but I'm just taking a precaution. Probably not needed, but you don't want to be thinking about that when you're halfway down. There you go, Jesse. Yeah, pretty when you are, mate. We've seen some crazy things over the year, but winching into a vertical drop, well, that's a new one. You're probably going a little bit right here now. Yep, perfect. Winch in. There we go, put a bit left hand down, tiny bit. Perfect. Are you winching me, Jesse? Yeah, that's uh, worked quite well. This is wild. Yeah, I'm just tapping it so it goes nice and slow for you. It's uh, steep, I can see the full underside of your car. Steep, alright. Yeah, I only got a bit in there, mate. How does that feel? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's cool. That's steep. Steep as they come. There's nothing steeper. Okay, taking those mirrors off was a good idea. For the second stage, we're once again unhooking the rear winch and repositioning the runver to the front. It's actually the scariest, safest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> loose. Hey, you feel it down there, Sean? That went wild from the back. It was bloody loose, mate. That's that steeper than gunshot. Yeah. There you go, the spare tyre. Yeah, on that one, Sean. There you go. Play out some out for us. Too easy. I reckon that's about a metre deeper than last year. Easy done. Easy done. First down pub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. That was awesome. Well, Jesse's up next. He's opting for the same approach that we did with Soot. Just get a winch on the back, winch on the front. Definitely the winch on the front is a good idea because that bull bar, you can see mine scraped for the first three metres of here. And luckily the winches are already out connected. So you saw how smooth that was. One thing Jesse's got to come to terms with is uh, a vertical drop because it really is. There's nothing short of vertical on that one. How are you feeling, Jesse? Yeah, look, you had a nice slow winch on the back of you. Pete's going to let me down this pretty quickly, I reckon. There you go. Anyone want to do anything? His tyres are about to go in a bit, Pete. A little bit to me, mate. Yep, just like it, yep. <laughs> it's nice and narrow, it fits in beautifully. Oh, you're stuck. You'll have to, you'll have to winch into it, mate. <laughs> you're knocking the top off for the rest of us. <laughs> Oy. The tires are off the ground. There we go. The D-Max has fitted into the gap like a glove. Clear views and all. Wow! Oh. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is wild. How's that feel, Jesse? That's Full a vertical on. D-Max. Wow. This is loose. Gonna take a lot of mud with him. I've done some loose stuff in cars. Oh, you're doing a good job for the boys, mate. The D-Max is actually a grader. I was so frightened the airbag was going to go off my face then. Wow. That was loose. Unbelievable. Well, that was nothing short of epic. Second car down Palm Creek for the season, and I tell you what, it was scary. With a couple of vehicles down, it looks like the entry to Palm Creek is a little bit more like a track. But Pete likes to live dangerously, so he's opted for a front winch only. This is a crazy man right here. <laughs> Look at him. That's a crazy man laugh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, that was pretty controlled. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Oh, he could have driven that, I reckon. Yeah. And he could have driven it for sure. Look at that. In the rear of the bar is just... Smoothing it out for the next guy. Pigeon Pete. Pigeon Pete, he's on again. He's on. Something I'm concerned about is the 200 series. How's it going to fit? I think it's going to be really scary at the top, but we'll get used to it by the time it gets to the bottom because it's very, very wide. And we're kind of worried that the flares and the snorkel are sort of going to be in the way. No, um, that front wheel's not even on the ground. No, nah, that's what I thought was going to happen. See, as it, as it opens up at the bottom, I'm not as worried. 
like a glove, some would say. Yep. The oh. slider's doing a bit of ploughing for the back flare too, which is good. Oh, yep. The oh. winch. Oh, there it is. It's going to flex it on the winch into the bank. But that's all right. Nice. Very good, mate. Very good. It's not too bad at all, really. You scrape the snorkel a bit, but flares are intact. And, no bad um, news. No, ba <laughs> no bad news whatsoever. That is actually really good. It's, you wouldn't want to go much wider, let me tell you that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you had brush bars, I reckon you would have been maybe in trouble. Very nice, Az. Very nice, mate. That, Very nice. Bring them all dirt down. Good to see. <laughs> all I can see is dirt. Well done, Az. Well done, mate. Good. good. Beautiful, mate. Yep, that's it. Feel it scrabbling for traction under there. It wants it. How good is that? What a feeling. That is absolutely cool. That is so cool. Well, Very well done. Palm Creek entry is officially open. It is officially open. We've got a proper <laughs> track now. People come down here and think 100 cars have driven it, but this is what it normally looks like. Big difference, isn't it? Yeah, big change. Wow. We're going to have it like this the whole tally track, I reckon. We are hardly two k's into the old telly and it's nearly taken us an entire day. The track just keeps on giving. I've never seen it this tough before. Oh, look at the amount of mud at the front here. That's why. I've basically got traction, but I've got, unfortunately, about three cube of mud in front of the old sooty here. That's the problem with going first. You've got to literally make your own track. Some say this is the toughest one of the whole telly. I've come up here 13 times now. In all my years, I've never been bogged down to the chassis here. If this is anything to go by, getting to the tip is going to be one heck of a challenge. That's if I can get out of this one. But you folks are going to have to wait till next time to see if we can make it up to the very top of Australia. But I'll let you in on a little secret. We have a wild time trying to get there. Next time on 4 Drive 24-7, join us for the final episode of our Cape York adventure. A lot of water coming in. We thought we'd seen wet conditions so far, but ahead, the conditions are like we've never seen before. Flooded four-wheel drives, insane crossings, and one rig that doesn't make it out. Don't miss this one. Coming soon, only on YouTube.